Sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh, when a duelist has been pushed too far or the influence of evil is allowed to take over, you get to see one of probably my favorite things in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. And that is the overkill, I'm going to completely destroy you with all my being style of dueling. You know what I mean. When a duelist abandons all of their previous philosophies on dueling and basically just completely embraces the I'm going to destroy my opponent mentally and physically by all means necessary. However, it doesn't always have to be because a duelist snaps in the middle of the duel. Sometimes, well, that's just the way they are. So for today's video, I thought, how about we take a look at the top 10 times in the Yu-Gi-Oh series where a character went pure overkill and just flexed all over the opponent. I'd like to invite you all to my top 10. I'll take on all five of you, simultaneously. Yuri from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 has always been a pretty unhinged character. You never quite knew if you were safe to be around him, especially with that disarming smile. However, at the end of the day, he was a psychopath with a very obvious superiority complex too, which unfortunately for his enemies, his skills did actually back up. Yuri was so confident in his abilities as a duelist that just for the lols, sometimes he wouldn't use his actual deck in a duel. Instead, despite even the fact he's playing against topped ranked opponents like Alexis Rhodes and Sora Percy, he would use the mass produced ancient gear structure deck proving it was he and not just his deck that garnered him so many victories in a duel. And while that on its own could be seen as Yuri flexing and a little bit of overkill, that is not the moment I want to talk about. For me personally, it was when he was challenged by five duelists of Yu Show Duel School. Instead of taking them on one by one, he wanted to prove that he was just that much better than them all and so allowed them to duel him 5v1. Although these duelists were unnamed characters, their decks, I must say, were nothing really to laugh at. Within their first turns, they managed to get out Ojama King, who limited Yuri's field, VWXYZ, Dragon Catapult Cannon, that could banish a monster every turn, Super Vehicle Roy Jumbo Drill, that could inflict piercing battle damage, and Master of Oz, who had a whopping 4,200 attack points. Yuri, completely unfazed by the overwhelming odds that sat before him, just proceeded to annihilate them all. Not only did he beat all five of the duelists by himself, but to add insult to injury, he beats them all in a single turn with only his ace monster. Ouch. It's my move. Now let's see what kind of trouble I can summon up. During the duel between Yuma, Astral and Vector, upon being on the back foot, Yuma and Astral begin to Zexelmorph. However, the merge fails. This was due to the influence of Vector messing with the darkness in Astral's heart. With this failure to merge, Astral forces a Zexal morph again. But this time he has abandoned all faith in Yuma as a duelist and a friend, meaning Astral takes 100% control of Yuma's body. This results in the dark Zexal. In this form, Astral lost all compassion as a duelist. He dueled only with anger and didn't even care about the damage he took. Using his number C39, Utopia Ray V, equipped with DZW Chimera Clad, this allowed him to continuously and savagely attack Vector's number 104, Masquerade, should it survive the battle, which through the effect of Vector's trap, it did. In fact, Vector was able to increase his monster's attack by 100 points more than Yuma's monster each time it attacked. So, Yuma in a berserk state leans into this infinite situation, where every time he attacks, his monster's attack points double at the cost of 100 life points. He continues to attack over and over again, uncaring that his life points are slipping down to zero. <laughs> He manages to get his monster up to 83,200 attack points before Yuma and Astral could retake control of the duel. However, had Dark Yuma been allowed to continue with the duel as he was doing, he would have been able to get a monster with 2,662,400 attack, where his final attack would have been impressive, but it would have led to his defeat. <laughs> <laughs> going back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, this time I'm going to be looking at Zark, who decided to have a non-stop dueling hype train against anyone and everyone who would join in before he obliterated the world. Clearly he must have got this idea from his one quarter Yuri part, however Zark to prove that he is truly the strongest in all the world 
duels 10 top tier Yu-Gi-Oh duelists in a row, defeating the likes of Asta Phoenix, Sora Percy, Shea Obsidian, Kite Tenjo, Gong Strong, Jack Atlas, Silbo Saratari, Crow Hogan, Leo Akaba, and Declan Akaba, all in the same duel. Keep in mind as well, he had a habit of beating two duelists at the same time as well, to add further insult. However, while clearly this is overkill, there is a specific moment in this hype train duel that I think solidifies his OPness, I guess. And it was when the professor appears to duel him. Suck. What? Equipped with the very cards that sealed him away all those years ago, the professor thinks he's going to be the one to save the day. This is not what happens. Instead, Zark immediately OTKs him the very first turn he gets, going for irony as well by defeating him with the cards he brought to fight against him. Looks like you won't get a chance to play your special cards, and that's terrible! Keep in mind that the Professor was supposed to be the main central antagonist of the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! Art 5 series until Zark appeared, so it just kind of solidifies the fact that the Professor is a big fat letdown, whereas Zark Pretty OP. <laughs> For those that don't know, one of the most powerful mechanics in the Master Rule 4 style of Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling is something called the extra link. It's basically where, through a lot of skill and correct card combinations, you can make your link monster create a connection all the way from your extra monster zone to your opponents, granting you the ability to summon into their extra monster zone, and essentially lock them out of using their extra deck completely. It's tough to pull off, and it requires quite a lot of resources to get into it, so only a madman or someone that really wants to flex on their opponent would even attempt to pull this off. But in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, two characters dared to try this maneuver. During Revolver and Yusaku's final duel, Revolver, using Yusaku's Firewall Dragon, was able to create a link all the way around the board, making the first extra link ever seen on screen. And while this is impressive, one of Revolver's underlings, known as Spectre, actually one-ups this and does something a little bit more impressive. During his duel against the evil AI Lightning, Spectre was able to create what Revolver couldn't, the perfect extra link. Something that Revolver called extra link full mode. Completely locking out Lightning from using his extra deck and commanding complete field dominance. Spectre basically wanted to give Lightning zero chance of a comeback and for the most part, he did achieve this. <laughs> However, sadly, he would not go on to win the duel. But honestly, regardless, it was still amazing to see. And with Master Rule 5 on the horizon, this could be the last time you see an opponent be locked out of their extra deck. Treasure it, I guess. I still have a lot more spoiling to do. Go Giant Grinder! Imagine being in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe for a moment. There are professional Yu-Gi-Oh! duelists you see on TV, and you look up to them, you aspire to be like them, and out of the blue one day, one of them invites you to have a meet-up and duel with them. Sounds awesome, right? However, what you slowly start to realize midway through your duel is that person is an absolute psychopath. I won't be happy until all my fans get exactly what they deserve! Yes, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, a celebrity duelist known as Quattro invites Bronk and Caswell to duel him because, well, he just loves to spoil his fans. However, in reality, he hates them all. He convinces them to agree to a battle royale, and even allowing himself to go last, despite the fact he would be at an even greater disadvantage. During the duel, he coaxes them to bring out monsters that he can use to manipulate the duel later on. Then, when he uses the effect of his giant grinder Xyz monster, he begins to take the duel in a sinister way. As he begins to use his opponent's monsters against them in order to whittle down their life points, and even after he makes the winning strike, he's still not satisfied, and begins to attack again. Again. The result is both duelists being slammed into the ground, with Caswell even breaking his arm from the impact. Everything's gonna be okay, Bronk. But hey, at least they got his autograph. Attack with Cosmic Crush! Strike him down!
During the alternate dimension arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Jaden gets into a high stakes duel against Bran Mad King of Dark World, who throughout the duel keeps sacrificing all of his friends through their negative emotions. He does this to meet the criteria for the creation of the ultimate fusion card, Super Polymerization. And as well, he's probably just doing this to mess with Jaden. Upon witnessing the deaths of each of his friends, Jaden just thinks, screw it. I've lost everyone, it's time to go all out. As soon as you hear the most optimistic and fun-loving duelist of what I would consider every single series of Yu-Gi-Oh, renounce dueling for fun and basically just going all in for revenge, you know something bad is gonna happen. I used to duel for fun, but now I'm dueling to avenge what you did to my best friends. Uh, it's payback time! It reminds me of a quote I read. There are three things all wise men fear. The sea in a storm, a night with no moon, and the anger of a gentle man. Ha! I play the spell card O Oversoul! When you hear that epic music play, you can see Jaden is ready for that overkill. He uses a combination of Neos, Assault Armor, and Battle of Sleeping Spirits to continuously beat down Bronn. Two, in his own words, witness him squirm. This onslaught gives Bronn no time to counter and leads to Jaden's victory through anger. And it is from this moment, Jaden descends into the being known as the Supreme King. Hopefully you all know this, but in Duel Monsters, the objective is to reduce your opponent's life points down to zero. And that's it. Not to try and kill your opponent. What happened was Carly was snooping around the Arcadia Movement building, as some real shady stuff had been going on there. Seiya, a psychic duelist who can make his monsters tangible, senses her approaching. Carly reveals she knows all about the missing children that have been sacrificed in order to find psychic duelists. And when she leaves this place, she's going to blow the story wide open. Seiya is having none of this, so he chucks her a dual disc and says you've got one turn or else you're not getting out of here alive. You need to keep in mind as well that Carly is pretty much a novice at dueling. She's only ever dueled once before this and that was with Jack Atlas's help. It is due to this lack of skill, she's very easily outplayed. Seiya, towards the end of the duel, uses his monster to attack her fortune fairy which throws her straight at the window. Seiya was very capable of just ending the duel there, he'd clearly won, but he doesn't stop. He announces that her death will look like an accident, and so attacks again, throwing Carly out the window and down to the ground where she would die. Or if you watch the dub, she fell into a big purple cloud. Don't feel too bad though, as she is reborn as a dark signer after her death. And she basically does the exact same thing to Seiya out of revenge. In this case, I'd say it's less overkill and pretty justified. If someone kills you, kill him back, I guess. Night, night, little mouse. <laughs> Actually, I'm only required to remove two, but I'm in a destructive mood today. So let's do this. Zane Truesdale has always been known to duel in excess. Having a monster in his arsenal with 4,000 base attack that can be summoned through power bond to give it 8,000 attack, it's pretty overkill to begin with. I've seen him have plenty of duels where he goes over the top in terms of attack points. Getting out a monster with 16,000 attack, for example, against Ubel, or 36,900 against Jaden. Yeah, they're all pretty big moments. However, the overkill moment I'm going to talk about is when Zayn is on a real bad downward spiral. He has lost constantly after the defeat at the hands of Asta Phoenix. In Zayn's lowest moment, he is convinced to duel underground, and he's put in a situation where both duelists are attached with electric shock collars that would inflict real damage every time they were hit. Zayn does his best to duel against the most annoyingly dubbed voice in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh series. Here we go! You're about to get a big boo -boo. However, he proves too strong. Zayn, having had all his monsters destroyed and being mocked, begins to realize his past dueling philosophy is wrong. All this time I've been focusing on nonsense, like respecting my opponents, when I should have been thinking about winning. He now understands that respecting your opponent in a duel is foolish, and you must abandon this way of thinking if you want to focus on what is truly most important. Victory. I not think! I know it with all my soul! His voice becomes more jaded and uncaring. 
he takes joy in creating his Chimera Tech Over Dragon out of all of the Cyber Dragons that have perished. By merging them all into one dark creature, he creates a monster with 4,800 attack and six attacks. And in one turn, Zane inflicts over 11,700 damage in order to wipe out Mad Dog. And it is with this moment that the birth of Hell Kaiser begins. The Zane you think you knew is long gone. This is one of the most iconic moments in Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'd basically be a fool to leave it off the list. During the Waking the Dragons arc, out of desperation, Yami Yugi plays the Seal of Orichalcos. Due to this action, he eventually loses the duel, and as a cost, little Yugi's soul is ripped from his body. I guess we could quickly mention this as well. It's only a small moment, but Yugi is seen as the bad guy in this duel because he starts sacrificing a bunch of his own monsters in order to deal as much damage as possible to Raphael. I mean, this act is seen as a bad thing. However, not that long ago, he was doing the exact same thing with his catapult turtle against Panic, and that was fine, apparently, but... God forbid he do it under the Orichalcos' influence and everybody loses their minds. To be fair though, he probably did just stop respecting his monsters and his cards and that's probably where people draw issue from it, so... Since he's useless, I'll sacrifice my dark magician! Alright then, fair enough. But what I want to talk about is what happens next. Racked with guilt for losing Yugi, the lone pharaoh ends up in a duel with Weevil Underwood. Weevil, just to mess with the pharaoh, says he has the only card that can save Yugi right here in his hand. The pharaoh, relieved, approaches to take what he believes is the only hope of returning his friend. But Weevil rips it in half right in front of his eyes. And it is at this moment that Yugi decides, I am about to end this whole man's career. You'll pay for that. Hear me, Weevil? <laughs> You'll pay dearly. I mean, if you're even the slightest Yu-Gi-Oh fan, you must know what happens next. But Yugi plays Berserker Soul. Every time he draws a monster card, he can attack Weevil again. And, oh, what do you know? It's a monster card. Well, what about the next one? Oh, it's another monster card. Uh, what did you get for the next one, Yugi? Monster card! Uh, you can stop now, like you've won. Monster card! Doro! Monster card! Doro! Monster card! Oh, yeah! Yugi! Needless to say, I think Weevil's It Was Just a Prank Bro had no effect here at all. So, for the number one most overkill moment in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, for me personally, is the duel between the main character of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 series, Yuya Sakaki, and the two dimensional counterparts of his main gal, Serena and Ruri, who, keep in mind, are possessed by an evil parasite, and keep in mind as well that Yuya has the spirit of one of his alternate dimension halves inside himself as well. Yuya is a good kid. He wants people to smile and he always helps those in need. At this moment, his best friend and childhood sweetheart, Yuzu, has been missing and all he wants to do is get her back home safely. Throughout the duel, he begins to get pushed back more and more. He gets angry at one point in the duel, but Yuto manages to calm him down. Oh, this is probably important to mention as well. Yuya also has the malignant spirit of his former combined self within his body that under intense emotional situations can manifest itself and cause basically a whole lot of bad things to happen. Well, he resists the urge to embrace that darkness then, and when the doctor manages to sneak a parasite into his brain and attempt to turn him into an ally. Luckily, he manages to hold on to his sanity once again. Honestly, it's lucky that Yuya is such a chill guy. I'm sure nothing would get under his skin to make- Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, the doctor brings out the mind-controlled Yuzu, and he starts wiping his filthy old man hands all over her face, and- Well, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Yuya goes full berserk mode, summing out the embodiment of his and Yuto's emotions. Odd Eyes Raging Dragon. With this monster, he decimates the field. And when one of the girls says, nice try, but one of us is going to survive next turn, and then you're screwed, Yuya announces there will be no next turn. 
And this is where he performs one of the most destructive attacks seen on screen. Obliterating two, keep in mind, innocent girls being mind controlled. Going straight through them and blasting out the wall behind them. Leaving them unconscious on the ground. Everything from the music, the monster's attack and the emotions really fuels this moment. And the sheer amount of damage Yuya is trying to inflict in this moment personally makes it my number one most overkill moment in Yu-Gi-Oh.